Hello guys and welcome to our last video of the ECG's abnormal rhythm series, the irregular tachycardias. Now if you recall from one of our previous videos on uh, this slide that irregular tachycardias are divided into SVTs and ventricular fibrillation. And SVTs are again classified into atrial fibrillation, multifocal atrial tachycardia, and atrial flutter with variable block. But we've already explained atrial flutter with variable block under the regular tachycardias video. So in here now, we will be discussing atrial fibrillation, multifocal atrial tachycardia, and ventricular fibrillation. So let's get started first with atrial fibrillation. And atrial fibrillation is actually the most common sustained arrhythmia. And it has many causes, many etiologies, and mechanisms but pretty much all of them have the same ACG criteria. So we will be discussing this criteria here, which are the following. First, you will have an irregularly irregular rhythm. In other words, it's a complete chaos. The second thing is, you do not have distinct P waves. You simply have a chaotic fibrillatory baseline. And therefore, you do not have an isoelectric baseline anywhere on the ECG. And finally, the QRS complexes are usually normal, unless one of the three things occur. One, you have a pre-existing bundle branch block. Two, you have an accessory pathway, as in wolf parkinson white syndrome. And three, is that you have a rate-related aberrant conduction. And here on this ECG, we can see a typical atrial fibrillation. First, the rhythm is irregularly irregular because the RR intervals are changeable with each beat and the second thing is that you have a narrow complex tachycardia because of the narrow QRS complexes and the third thing is you do not have distinct P waves but simply you have a fibrillatory baseline. And now coming to the second irregular tachycardia, the multifocal atrial tachycardia, and it's characterized by the following. First, you have an irregularly irregular rhythm, just like an atrial fibrillation. The second thing is that you have at least three distinct P wave morphologies in the same lead. In other words, because of the multiple foci in the atrium, for each beat, you will be having a different P wave morphology. Now, please note that in the multifocal atrial tachycardia, you have one P wave per QRS complex. And this is unlike atrial fibrillation, where you will be having multiple fibrillatory waves per QRS complex. And that's because in multifocal atrial tachycardia, the atrial rate is about 100 to 200 beats per minute. Therefore, the heart rate is about 100 to 200 beats per minute. Whereas in atrial fibrillation, the atrial rate can reach up to 350 to 600 beats per minute. And since the AV nodes cannot conduct rates above 200, there will be an AV block. And since the rates are already irregular, there will be an irregular blocking at the AV node. And therefore, you will have an irregular ventricular response of less than 200 beats per minute usually. And therefore, the heart rate will be usually less than 200 in atrial fibrillation. And so, both atrial fibrillation and multifocal atrial tachycardia will usually have an irregular heart rate of less than 200 beats per minute. Now, please note that multifocal atrial tachycardia usually presents in ill elderly people with an acute respiratory failure, either due to an acute decompensation of COPD or an acute decompensation of CHF. And usually when it occurs, it carries a poor prognosis to the underlying illness. This is a typical example of multifocal atrial tachycardia. First, it's an irregularly irregular rhythm. The RR intervals are changeable. The second thing, it's a narrow complex tachycardia. And the third thing is that the multiple P wave morphologies preceding each QRS complex. And this is multifocal atrial tachycardia. Here's another example of Matt. And you can see the different P wave morphologies in lead two. And you can see also signs of RVH, right ventricular hypertrophy. The R wave is longer than the S wave in V1, 
and you can see deep S waves in V6. This is right ventricular hypertrophy, probably due to a carpal manali in the setting of a severe COPD. And now coming to the last irregular tachycardia, the ventricular fibrillation, and it's characterized by the following on an ECG. You have a chaotic, irregular deflections of varying amplitudes, and therefore you do not have any identifiable P waves, no identifiable QRS complexes, and no identifiable T waves. And that's all because the ventricles suddenly try to contract at rates up to 500 beats per minute. But since this is a rapid and irregular electrical activity, this renders the ventricles from contracting in a synchronized manner, and therefore this leads to a sudden drop in the cardiac output, leading to a cardiac arrest. The amplitude will decrease with duration, progressing from coarse ventricular fibrillation into fine ventricular fibrillation and finally into asystole. On the first ECG here we can see a typical coarse ventricular fibrillation. First you can see chaotic irregular deflections of varying amplitudes and you cannot see any obvious P waves nor QRS complexes nor any T waves. And the second ECG here taken from lead 2 you can see it's a fine ventricular fibrillation. So it's the same description as a coarse one, but simply you have shorter amplitudes. This is the end of irregular tachycardias, and with this video we conclude the series of ECG's abnormal rhythms. And hopefully I'll see you with the next video on cardiac axis deviations. Thank you very much for watching.